Okay. So to, in today's note, before we get to talking about the volume and surface area of a cylinder, we're going to take a look at Pythagorean theorem and three dimensions. And this is also known as your space diagonal or um, you'll see the stick in the box type of problems. So in the rectangular prism that we have there, I don't know for sure if it's a cube, we have um, the rod or stick in the box X and we need to find the length. In order to find the length, we're going to draw the diagonal of the base from this vertex to its opposite. And I'm also going to highlight this edge of the prism here to highlight this right triangle within the box. Okay, so let's trace that again. I'm going to put in the box for the right angle. Now, as I mentioned, this dimension here is the height of the prism, and I'm going to label this um, A. It can be A or B. Now, I don't have to use A or B, but those are the two legs um, and the Pythagorean theorem. We use A squared plus B squared. And then I'm also going to highlight, let me grab a different color, within, so this Length A is then the hypotenuse of this right triangle in the corner. Okay, because so the rectangular prism, the rectangle at the bottom has four right angles. So I'm going to draw the right angle there. Okay, I think that's fine. Um, and I'm going to call this the dimensions of, or I'm going to label the two legs of that right triangle as the dimensions of the solid. So this would be the length and this is the width is we have a length, width, and height in a rectangular prism. So starting in the green right triangle, we know that L squared plus W squared, so leg squared plus leg squared, squared, which is A in this case, even though it's the leg of the orange right triangle. And looking at the orange, triangle, right triangle, we know that a squared plus h squared equals x squared. So using substitution in these two equations, I'm going to take the l squared plus w squared and substitute it down below for the a squared because it's equal to a squared. And we get length squared plus width squared plus h squared equals x squared. So that's the formula to find um, the length of the rod or stick in the box. If you want to have it in terms of the positive value for x so that you don't have to take the square root, uh, show the plus or minus when you're done, if you think about taking the square root, x would be equal to the square root of length squared plus width squared, plus height squared. Okay, so we're going to take a look at two problems below within number one. The first one says to find length AG to the nearest hundredth. So I'm actually going to use the straight edge tool and draw segment AG. You can do the Pythagorean theorem twice if you wanted to. So remember, if you draw straight down, so if you forget, once well, I guess I'm going to still use the line tool, you can use that right triangle and then, or work within one triangle, make your way to the next one. And marking the dimensions that are given, um, we know that, or looking at the dimensions that are given, GF is 5, so we know that um, H to E is also 5 because opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent. And if BF is 6, we know that um, A to E is 6. So here are the two right triangles. So you can do A squared plus B squared equals C squared here, and then you have this dimension, and then do A squared plus B squared equals C squared there. But since we know the formula, uh, I'm going to use that. And so then AG equals the square root of 
length squared plus width squared plus height squared. So that would be um, 10 squared plus 5 squared plus 6 squared. Um, 100 plus 25 plus 36 is 161. And the square root of that is approximately 12.69 to the hundredth place. Down below, we have, um, for the application piece, we have a box that has the dimensions shown to the right. A game was to be packed into this box. Part of the game was a rod that will just fit into the box. Find the length of the rod to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to draw in the rod. And say I'll have it go from this corner in the bottom of the box up here to G. Okay? So the length of the rod... equals the square root of length squared plus width squared plus height squared. So 40 squared plus 80 squared plus 60 squared. So that's equivalent to 11,600. And that is equivalent to 107.703297. And to the nearest tenth, um, to the right is a zero, so it's going to be approximately 107.7 .7 centimeters. Okay, now moving on to um, the cylinder. So let me adjust this so we can fit the whole table. And we're just barely going to do this. So let's fill in the blank at the top. It says, recall that to create a cylinder, rotate a blank about a blank. So to create a um, cylinder, we rotate a rectangle about a side. So that means you could also rotate a square since the square is a rectangle. Now let's move this up. So we're going to take a look at the solid, the net, and then our formulas. So if we focus on the solid, uh, a cylinder has two bases, so they are shaded. So here is a base edge, and here is a base edge. Do a better job, Tracy. Okay. The two bases are circles in the cylinder. Um, we have our lateral surface. This surface is curved or moving around, and this is our height of the cylinder, okay? So over here to the cylinder laying flat, okay, we have, again, our two bases. And here is our lateral surface. Um, within the circle, again, we're to, in order to find the area, we're going to need the radius. And we spoke a little bit about this when we were talking about solids um, on that last day of circles. This rectangle is a curved surface. Um, this dimension here, which is the length of the rectangle, has to wrap all the way around this circular base. Okay, so that is a length, but since it has to wrap, it's going to be curved and wrap around the outside of a circle, this dimension is actually circumference. Okay, this is dimension here is still the height of the cylinder, but the C stands for circumference. So the lateral surface, the area of that lateral surface, is going to be the circumference times the height. Okay, so down here on that lateral area section um, here, in this first part of the table, we use L for lateral area, or you can even do LA, it doesn't really matter. Um, the lateral area L equals circumference. Circumference is pi d. Uh, we often use 2 pi r. 
times the height. So the total surface area is going to be your lateral surface area plus two base areas. Now these aren't specific formulas per se, that's just how I write it out to remind myself I have a lateral surface plus two bases, okay, two base areas to add in. So as a formula, it would be 2 pi rh plus 2 times pi r squared. But again, I wouldn't memorize formulas, for surface area especially. And the volume formulas are given on the reference sheet. Um, you would just know you have for surface area, you find the area of all of the surfaces and then add them together. So the volume formula, just like with a prism, it is the base area times the height. This is on your reference sheet, okay? And the volume formula on the reference sheet is pi r squared h. And that's because your base is a circle and the area of a circle is pi r squared. Okay, so let's take a look at number two. Find the volume of the cylinder in terms of pi. So in terms of pi is an exact answer. We want everything always, always, always for every problem this year and on the regions. And moving forward, you always want to provide an exact answer and not an approximate unless they tell you to round. Okay? So first thing, write the formula. Find the volume. So you look at your reference sheet. And the volume formula is pi times r squared times h. So looking at the problem, the radius um, is 9, as the full diameter is 18. So we have a radius of 9 meters. So it's pi times 9 squared, or 81, times 5. So in terms of pi, 81 times 5 is 405 pi meters cubed. Don't forget your unit. Volume is cubic units. Any area, so surface area included, is square units. In number three, find the surface area of the cylinder in terms of pi. So we have the bottom surface and the top surface. So I'm going to put, um, so for the top, the area is going to be pi times r squared, so pi times 11 squared. The bottom is also, um, because the bases in a cylinder are congruent, pi times 11 squared. And then the lateral surface is, um, remember, when you lay it flat, a rectangle, so it is base times height, but remember, this part of that rectangle has got to go around the circle. So it's circumference times the height. And circumference is 2 pi r, so 2 pi times 11 times the height of, in this case, 7. The height can also be given here from one center um, to the center below. All right, so 11 squared, so we have 121 pi. We have 121 pi. 2 times 11, 22 times 7, we have 154 pi. Now as a total, when you add the 1, 2, 3 areas, because you have three surfaces, the total surface area is going to be 396 pi centimeters squared. Number four, we have the net of a cylinder shown to the right. What is the lateral surface area of this cylinder to the nearest square inch? Um, well, that's easy. Again, lateral area is circumference times height. So 2 pi r, which is our radius. Um, since we have the diameter of 8, our radius is going to be 4 inches. So 2 pi times 4 times the height. Now, um, this net, I don't want to say it's laying sideways, but you have to pay attention. The height of any prism cylinder um, is the dimension that connects the two bases. So 
So this dimension here of 15 connects the top base to the bottom base at your height is 15. So 2 pi times 4 times 15. Um, so the nearest square inch, you can type this in your calculator right away, um, but I'm going to write the um, exact answer first. So 2 times 15 is 30, 30 times 4 is 120 pi, so that would be exact. And then rounded, that's approximately, it's the nearest square inch, 377 inches squared. Number 5, if the volume of a cylinder is 80 pi inches cubed and it has an altitude of 5 inches, find the diameter of the circular base. So volume of a cylinder, go to your reference sheet, write it down. So volume is equivalent to pi r squared h. And let's substitute what we know. We know the volume is 80 pi, so that we substitute for v. And we know we have a height of 5. So pi r squared times 5. Now given this formula, the only unknown variable is r, and I can use the radius to find the diameter. So let's cancel out the pies. Um, divide 80 by 5 and we get 16 equals r squared. Take the square root and r is equivalent to 4 and negative 4 and we want to reject the negative because we can't have a negative radius. Remember, with a degree 2 uh, equation, you need your two roots uh, unless you have that double root. So if the radius is 4, the diameter is going to be 8 inches. And then last, number 6, find the height of a right cylinder with a surface area of 160 feet squared. Well, if you draw a picture, because there is no formula on your reference sheet to get an idea of how you find surface area, and can I write a general um, formula? So the surface area is um, the area of a circle, which is pi r squared, plus another pi r squared, or you can combine and say 2 pi r squared. So there's the two circles, and that lateral surface. And the lateral surface is circumference times height. Because one last time, this rectangular lateral surface, this dimension here, has to wrap around the base of the circle. And circumference is 2 pi r times your height there of the cylinder. So here's our general formula. Now we'll substitute what we know. We know that the surface area is 160 pi um, square feet, and we have a radius of 5. So 160 pi is equal to 2 pi um, times 5 squared plus 2 pi times 5 times h. We're trying to find the height. We don't know what the height is. So divide out the pi. Okay, we can cancel because it's part of every term. We have 160 equals 2 times 25 would be 50 plus 2 times 5, 10h. Subtract the 50, 110 equals 10h, divide by 10, and the height is 11 feet.